I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in my own Nicaragua. And today I had a friend write in and ask about whether he should bring in a PlayStation 5 and if that's going to cause any problems with Aduana or with customs. And this is a perfect opportunity to talk about a few different things from the super tactical what's a great way to do video gaming when you live in Nicaragua or anywhere, really, and how to think about what's going to come through Aduana or Customs without a problem and give you some practical tools. So we're going to use a real world example and talk about how you can change your lifestyle when living in Nicaragua and get even more out of the Nicaraguan experience if it applies to you and how you're going to be able to work with Customs for getting things in. Let's get to all that right after the bump. This is such a perfect example to use for so many things. We're gonna dig into this. I think this is gonna be an interesting episode and I'm really into video games and my girls are very big video gamers. So this is something that we're very aware of and deal with every day. So let's start with the tactical question. Can you bring in a PlayStation 5? Well, this is gonna fall into that gray area. So the first rule, we've got a couple ways to look at things. One, if you're traveling with something that you would not take on a weekend vacation to Cancun, it has a potential to get flagged. That doesn't mean that every single time someone brings something in that could be taxed, that could be get an import duty, that it's going to happen. It only happens sometimes. It depends if they notice it, depends if they realize what it is, depends who you get. But there are some things that fall into a category of this is not travel gear, this is an import. And a PlayStation 5, you can see why basically you know it's going to be an import. So would you take a PlayStation 5 on your weekend trip to Cancun? I think the answer is no. So you know right there that you are eligible for an import tax. Doesn't mean they will. I know people who've brought them in and have not gotten taxed. I also know people who have done so and have gotten taxed. So it definitely falls into the risk category no matter what. But you know this because you wouldn't take it on a weekend vacation. So obviously it is an import if you're really being honest about it. Two, if you're going to travel from Nicaragua, would you take this with you on a vacation somewhere else? Some people answer yes to the first question because mostly they're trying to say, no, 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 I would, I would totally do that. I don't believe you, but maybe. But if you're then going to be, you're here in Nicaragua, are you gonna unhook your PlayStation 5, pack that all up and take it with you on a trip from Nicaragua to say Colombia for the weekend? I think that makes it a little bit more clear that if you're not going to travel on from Nicaragua with it, absolutely, not going to be something uh, that you're that you're going to be uh, using as a tour. So it's it's an import. Now, again, it doesn't mean they're going to catch you, but it means you have an import that could be taxed in your luggage. So that's a way to think of it, and that generally answers. And then the third thing, you're asking the question. Basically, if you're not going to take it on a weekend trip, if you're not going to take it on a trip from Nicaragua, and if you are asking me about it, then you know that it is an import. And everyone asks these questions. I've never once been asked this question where someone wasn't importing the thing. There wasn't a question of, were they importing? The question was, will I get caught, right? And I don't know if you'll get caught. Like, there's no way to know. No one knows. Even if you ask an immigration officer or a customs officer, they're gonna be like, who knows, right? You're taking your chances. And that's fine, take your chances. It's not illegal or anything. It's just, you know, sometimes you have to pay a fee. Sometimes you don't. And sometimes it's a huge effort. Sometimes it's not. It's all risks. It's what you're willing to take for it. So those tools, though, knowing those three things will really help you make a decision. Are you doing something risky? And then gauge from there what you think about that. So that's for, now how do you get around that? We've mentioned this in other videos. Like if you one, maybe you don't need that item. Obviously, that's an answer. But let's assume you do need the item. You really want this PlayStation 5, but you really don't want to deal with the potential problems with Aduana. And why carry it in your luggage where it's likely to get ruined anyway? Use a shipping company. Always a Nicaraguan shipping company. This is something that we have to say because everyone, no matter how much I say it, jumps to, well, I'm going to go talk to an international shipper in the U.S. as 100% wrong every single time. There's no exception to this. Could you use DHL and get something into the country? Yes, they will probably not lose your item. Can you use FedEx or UPS? No, I don't believe you actually can. Um, can you use USPS? No, you absolutely cannot. Will DHL work? Yeah. Are you going to pay 10 times what it should be? At least, right? The answer to getting into Nicaragua, because every single thing that you're dealing with is you need someone local, not a person of business that is local, that has an import deal here in the country, and only Nicaraguan companies have that. So you have lots of them, uh, Optima, Nika Box, dozens of others. You see them advertised everywhere. Will they get you in at a fraction of the price? Yes, you have to work with a Nicaraguan shipper every single time. But if you do that, 
and you pick a good one, you're all set. The cost will be low, reliability high, it's going to get right to you, and they'll deliver right to your door. All right, so that, that will solve a lot of problems. And then you have a predictable price. You know exactly what it's going to cost to bring in that item, and you can make your decision from there. You don't have this fear that something dramatic is going to happen. And you can bring in electronics that way too. It's just a little bit more expensive, right? One's not electronics like a PlayStation. That's fine. Electronics like networking gear. I should have been more specific. Okay, so that's the first piece. The second piece of this is I want to talk about why you may want to change your lifestyle when coming to Nicaragua. Now, when you're moving to Nicaragua, with rare exception, and I mean really rare exception, those of you who are looking to come here are generally looking to change your lifestyle. You're looking to live less expensively. You want to live with greater safety. You're looking for more freedom. You want uh, healthier food. You want to just live in a place that's closer to other countries. You want to, an opportunity to learn a foreign language. You want to get immersed in another culture. You want to just shake up the dice of life and roll again, any number of things. But in all those cases, you're looking for a change. Very, very, very rarely is someone looking for, well, I want to move. I want to replicate my life as closely as possible. I know that some people have that feeling, but there's always something you want to change, right? Very few people want to change nothing and just only change where they have to, right? Does that make sense? Most people are coming because they want at least some change and most people want some continuity. So everyone has a blend and it's just figuring out where you fall and which items. Some people want to change the food. Other people don't want to change the food, but they do want to change the weather and so forth, right? So, so it's all different for each of you, but for an awful lot of you, big life changes are part of the whole thing with moving to a new country. And that's fantastic. And that is some of the big benefits, right? It's an opportunity to redefine how you think of your life and make it better for you, lower stress, better quality of life, healthier, safer, whatever. In doing this, one of those things that I think people should evaluate. Now, I'm going to give a specific example. For a lot of you, this doesn't apply at all, but follow with me because the thought process should work with other things as well. And I'll give a really quick example. I used to use uh, AMD Intel architecture. It's actually AMD architecture. Computers right? Because Intel copies AMD, for those who don't know. It's genuine AMD and Intel's the clone. Uh, that's I know it used to be different. That was a different era. These In the modern era, AMD is the architecture. So AMD processors and Linux computers. I love my Linux. It was fantastic. I did that for years. When moving to Nicaragua, the hardware that works best here, for those of us who use computers all the time, if you're just using a little Chromebook from you know a few minutes a day, then everything's different. When you're a full-time office worker, lowering your power consumption, reducing your heat generation uh, is important. And Apple Macintosh are just far better hardware for that. Not a little bit better, far better. And so we're, we lower our cost and our burden on the Nicaraguan ecosystem by choosing Apple hardware. And so that's one of the reasons we do it. I also use Final Cut Pro for all my show stuff, but I could work around that. I can move to DaVinci Resolve on AMD, no problem. If I didn't have power constraints, if I didn't care about generating heat, I'd do that, no problem. I'd be very happy with it. It runs on Linux. So for those of you who are looking for something, you want a free way to do what I do with all the bells and whistles, DaVinci Resolve on Ubuntu Linux, free. You can run it on amazing AMD hardware for cheap, no problem. But if you're coming to Nicaragua, I highly recommend considering moving to the Macintosh ecosystem. The uh, Apple Silicon is so uh, power efficient, you literally notice in day-to-day -day operations that it's going to lower your electric bills and reduce the amount of heat you're putting into your house. And if you're cooling that with a fan, maybe you don't notice. If you're cooling with air conditioning, you will definitely notice the amount that you have to pay for AC will be visible on your bill less than if you had a different type of computer. So that's an area where knowing you're going to be moving to Nicaragua and making small changes intentionally to, to affect what really matters for you here can make a big difference. So that's one area. Now we're going to give this specific example. In this example, my friend was asking about bringing a PlayStation 5. Now, if you live in the United States, for example, a PlayStation 5 is generally used, and I know there's exceptions. If you're a professional streamer, you have to have what you want to have. If you are um, using original IP that is only available on the PlayStation, again, you're limited and you have to use that. There's no way around it. So there's, I understand that there are times that the PlayStation or an Xbox or whatever are absolutely necessary because that's the thing you're going to use. And a Nintendo Switch is even more so like that because so many of the titles are only available on that. But in all these cases, game consoles, and so I come from a gaming background, right? Game consoles are for casual gamers and uh, PC gaming is for more serious gamers. You get better graphics, lower cost, uh, more power, bigger selection. 
right, buddy? It takes a little bit more effort to track things down, a little bit more effort to install things. Things like PlayStation and Xbox make it super, super easy. You just spend way more money and you get far less for it, but it takes no effort. So if you're a casual gamer and you have lots of money, it makes a lot of sense. When you're coming to Nicaragua, though, you run into some barriers. First of all, getting that PlayStation here, it's a problem. Not a huge problem, but it is something. You got to ship it. You got to figure it out. It could be taxed. That's the first barrier. Second barrier, all the games you're going to buy are at a massive price premium, and that's not going to be discounted because you're in Nicaragua. So you're going to be paying these huge huge fees like as it is people who are on playstation normally pay something like four times the same price that you would pay for games on a pc so that's a starting point right you have this massive outlay of money now if you don't care about the money you make tons of money and money's no object and whatever if that's what makes you happy just throw your money around that's completely cool but for most of us coming to nicaragua we're wanting to rethink our life choices and reduce our cost of living mostly and this is an opportunity to do that for two reasons one moving from that casual gamer stuff to more serious gamer stuff lowers the price. This is true in nearly every industry. Anytime you do stuff with prosumer, you're generally paying the, the pre, if you're doing like cheap, like you're just coming in, I don't care, just give me anything that works, you generally don't pay too much. In most things, when you get to prosumer, you're gonna pay a huge premium because it feels like pro, but gives you this easy to use, find it at Best Buy feeling. And so that's where you pay. And then when you go to pro, actually the price comes down even though the quality goes up. Same thing in cameras, same thing in computers, same thing in video games, same thing in, in bicycles, same thing, you name it. Like every industry has this price peak for people who are taking it more seriously than true casual, but not serious enough or not knowledgeable enough to make the leap into the, the better gear. Right. And so an audio equipment, right, come from the audiophile world. You get that middle tier stuff, you're spending so much money, but you can get really high end audiophile for a tenth, literally a tenth the money. So it's a completely different thing, mostly because there's all these weird bells and whistles that do nothing because they know that people in this space are likely to spend tons of money without because they think those bells and whistles matter. And the people in the pro space are like, here's what actually matters. And that's what I'm going to spend my money on. OK, so this is where the PlayStation 5 fits into the ecosystem under normal conditions, unless you're playing very specific games that you have no other choice about, you can do things cheaper and better some other way. So moving to Nicaragua, switching to PC gaming generally means you're not going to have a problem coming through a Duana because you can make a small PC that is a real computer that you would actually take with you. And I know loads of people who've done this, no problem at all. Uh, that you couldn't ship a computer the same as the PC, uh, same as the PlayStation 5, but you can get it cheaper. You don't have to worry about when the PlayStation 6 comes out that you have this problem that now you have to go through it all again. You have this uh, with PC gaming, you have a continuity that you just you know upgrade over time whenever is right for you. You don't have these cycles of you've got to get a new console for the new stuff. So in reality, moving from PlayStation to PlayStation is just like going between consoles. You might as well move from Xbox to PlayStation as PlayStation 5 to PlayStation 6. Everything changes. You don't use the same hardware normally. You don't use the same software. It's a big pain. Now they're making that a little bit better, but it's not been great over the years. And so it's it's a completely different thing where you rebuy everything every generation. And in PC gaming, you don't have to do that. You can upgrade any given piece, any given time, and it's much more fluid, that really lends itself to lifestyles in Nicaragua where you might be shipping in parts and getting it at um, unpredictable times and just slowly upgrading whenever it makes sense. Uh, of course, you can send a whole computer as well. Then the next piece is PC gaming is generally cheaper. So just making that move is going to make a Duana easier, your upgrades and long-term lifestyle easier, and it's going to give you many more games, right? Living in Nicaragua, you're going to have uh, this, this general increase in quality of life, which often lends itself to having more time to game. While having a nicer system that has more options for games is all beneficial under those circumstances. So that's a you know, not going to affect everybody, but may affect a lot of people. So again, using Nicaragua as a basis for lifestyle decisions and rethinking where a PlayStation 5 might be like, I've only got 15 minutes a week. I got to, you know, throw tons of money at it to make that 15 minutes count. Whereas now in Nicaragua, you might be like, now I've got hours a week, life is easier, and I want a library that's going to stay with me for my, for my whole life. I'm going to invest a little bit less and get way more, just put in a little bit more work. But not only do you save money, potentially quite a bit by switching to PC gaming. And this applies to people in the United States too. If you're in the US, you're in Canada, you just want to lower your cost of gaming and get higher quality games, just move off of consoles to PC, right? 
Consoles are absolutely fine. I've had them myself, but they are a luxury for the rich, right? That is, that's, you have to admit that that's where they fit in the ecosystem. And people don't like to say this. They like to say, oh, no, 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 they're easy. No, 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 they're fun. It's, it's, you know, I'm not a serious gamer. I shouldn't have to. And they make it seem like they're not a luxury premium item. They're not an extreme luxury premium item. Loads of people have them, but they are not for people who are being frugal with gaming. They're for people who are willing to spend quite a bit more uh, to be in the mainstream. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all with that. But if you're in the United States and you want to get more from your gaming experience, you can move off of consoles and get that improvement. Coming to Nicaragua, chances are you're going to notice that extra expenditure more because everything in life gets cheaper. Suddenly your PlayStation 5 doesn't cost a fraction of rent. It costs two months rent. Suddenly it doesn't cost, a, you know, a, a, a single game doesn't cost the same as a meal. It costs the same as a month of groceries, right? Little things like that start to, the perspective on it will change really quickly. The second part of that is when you move to Nicaragua, some of the online game providers, especially GOG.com, Grand Old Games, which has a very large library of really good stuff, they immediately recognize that you're in Nicaragua and dramatically lower the price of their games up to 90%. I'm not talking about a sale. I'm talking about location-based pricing. They will knock huge amounts off. Sometimes it's like 10%. Sometimes quite often it's like 40 to 50. And once in a while it's like 90. And then any sales they have are on top of that. So while they're already the cheapest way to get games that I know of, this makes it so much cheaper. So we can buy so many games so cheaply through GOG here in Nicaragua. It's insane. So the cost of us getting games went from like 30 or $40 to like four to $5 for the same titles. Uh, quite often, not always. Um, other major outlets like Steam, they don't use location-based pricing. They use uh, credit card-based pricing. So they're not going to change the instant you come to Nicaragua, but get a Nicaraguan credit card. And then when you go to pay with it, uh, they switch based on the country that your credit card's being processed in, and they lower their prices, sometimes quite dramatically, sometimes just a little bit as well. Now, Steam's a little bit more expensive all the time, but it's something that uh, you may really want to consider. So that is a thing that uh, compounds the already existing PC savings, right? Even if you pay full price in the US, you're still getting a fraction of the cost of, of buying the same games on a PlayStation 5 on an Xbox. But then moving to... Uh, flagging yourself as being in Nicaragua, you have so much more cost savings to realize gaming can end up being outrageously inexpensive when you live here. Now, all of that said, there's one more step that's worth considering. Now, for my friend who asked this question, if you're on a PlayStation 5, chances are you're doing big screen 4K, you really want it, you probably want a full gaming rig to do that. But for a lot of people who are looking at coming to Nicaragua, you may go another step farther and say, well, I don't want any more to be tied to like, in Nicaragua, we don't tend to be TV bound. Most people at most have one television in their house. They rarely use it if they are using it. Like mine right now, it's just playing some music in the background with some images. Uh, we're playing a Nika Roomba episode, right? And so there's just a little bit of music in the house. We use it for that. We don't sit around watching TV nearly as much as we did in the United States. For example, I generally watch one to two nights of television per fortnight currently. I mean, I can go a really long time. I currently know it's been more than a week since I sat down and watched any television at all. And it's just something that happens in Nicaragua. You're so likely to go out. Everyone's different. You may be video games and television all the time, and it's not going to change. But for a lot of people, the amount that you watch television in the United States, in Canada, whatever that is, it's going to be less when you come to Nicaragua. So that's something to consider that all those lifestyle things may change. Now, if you're a full-time video gamer, right, this is not going to apply to you, obviously. But for example, people who use Nintendo Switch, not that I recommend it, I absolutely hate Nintendo products, but we do have one. And what we found is when we're in the United States, we're very likely to hook it up to the TV and everybody sit around and play it on the TV. And when we're in Nicaragua, they're much more likely to use it as a portable unit. For those who don't know, it converts from a portable to a television unit. So you can treat it. So you're never going to get flagged in a duana for that because it totally is a travel device. It 100% is 100% of the time. It's something that you would absolutely take on a weekend trip. It's something you would take to a restaurant with you at dinner, right? My kids would throw it into a backpack and take it with them, except they don't play the Switch, but they would if that's what they played. Instead, what you can can get, and this is, I just want to point this out because we love Steam. We've been very happy with them and Steam makes the Steam Deck. And this is basically a Nintendo Switch for PC gamers. It is beautiful. 
so much better hardware than the Switch. I mean, world's better, complete, uncom not, there's no way to compare them, right? It is absolutely fantastic hardware at really good prices. So you, you'll pay somewhere between like $450 and $650 to get one of these, but it's a, you know, it's a handheld gaming system with a beautiful screen, great sound, Bluetooth, everything, amazing controls. It really makes PC gaming super easy, just like a console. It, turn, it is a full console for PC gamers but you get all those Steam pricing advantages, you get the automatic Steam library management stuff, and just like the Nintendo Switch, you just put it in a dock and plug it into a TV, and suddenly you have television-based gaming. Now, it's not going to be as powerful, it's way more powerful than a Switch, I don't know, 100 times the power, but it's not gonna be as powerful as like a custom gaming rig, so you're not gonna, if you're gonna be playing those 4K games, you're gonna be streaming, yeah, it's not gonna be that. But for us, we do adventure gaming and stuff, oh my gosh, it's fine, like there's no reason not to use it for that stuff, as long as it'll support the games that you want and it's constantly supporting more and more if you are a more casual gamer and you're just looking for a way to have excellent video gaming like really upping your quality while lowering your total cost of ownership the steam deck could be the way to go it's what my wife uses is what my kids use uh not when we're doing family gaming we tend to use because we have a gaming rig that we brought down before the steam decks were, were created uh but but so we tend to use that for, for like family game nights where we're all on the couch. But when they're just playing games on their own, the Steam decks are always in use. They're very popular. They love using them. We can take them to dinner. You can take them on a trip. They're so easy to throw in a backpack. They have a little case you put them into. Fantastic. Things like that can be great answers for people moving to Nicaragua. You want amazing gaming. You're willing to be a little bit flexible and rethink how you approach it. Suddenly you may spend a fraction of the money, get maybe even an improved experience, have no problems with Aduana, be flexible in the country, and adjust to the local lifestyle. The point of all this is not to sell you on one type of gaming versus another. I don't care. What the point is, is to show how you can strategically start to rethink life choices when coming to Nicaragua, whether it's choosing your computer or change, choosing how you play video games or choosing how, what kind of furniture you use or choosing whether you cook at home or go out to eat or whether you're choosing whether to hire domestic help or to do everything yourself or to work from home or to retire or to whatever, right? All these things, it's important to start stepping back and saying, I'm shaking up my life decisions. I'm rolling the dice again. This is an opportunity for me to take decisions that I may not have even made very well when I lived in the United States. Most people are not experts at decision making and say, okay, these might have been good decisions when I was an American. Are they still good decisions when I'm a Nicaraguan? Are they even reasonable decisions? And in many cases, they're reasonable, but they may not be good. And you have to assume they may not have been good. They may have just been the thing that you defaulted to when in the U.S. You heard about a PlayStation 5? You bought a PlayStation 5. Did you choose it because it was the right thing that really met your overall needs? Did you consider the financial aspects, the long-term ownership of games, all kinds of power consumption, all kinds of things? Probably not because you didn't need to. But now there's an opportunity to step back and say, wait, here's an aspect of my life that I want to make really good. Can I make it better? Does Nicaragua play into the decision in multiple ways? How do I affect that? And how do I really rethink what I'm doing for my new life to get the maximum happiness. And maybe that maximum happiness is going to be the PlayStation 5 makes me happy and I want it. Done. But maybe it's, oh, I don't play games like that. Oh, I would love to investigate a new way to play games. I would love a Steam Deck with PC gaming at, at lower cost and, and easier to deal with and I can take it to dinner with me? Wait, we're gonna go out a lot in Nicaragua. I'm not gonna be home the way that I was, right? For us, this is just my family, right? But this is a really common thing. When we were, lived in Texas, we almost never went out. Yeah, we would go to Taco Bell and stuff, but we would basically never leave the house. You could be very confident that we'd be home any given night of the week. You could just pop by and we'd be there. Here in Nicaragua, the opposite is true. Pop by any night and you're likely to find the dogs waiting for you and not us. Well, someone will be here watching the dogs, but the family will be out because we're always out. That's what we do most nights of the week. We go out. So if you have that kind of change of lifestyle, which is hard to predict ahead of time, but you easily will because a lot of people find that when coming to Nicaragua, they start like Nicaraguans living outside the house rather than inside the house. Suddenly little things like my PlayStation or Xbox tie to my television and I play them when I'm sitting in the living room changes to, but I'm going to be out. So I'm going to be out at dinner twice as often, three times as often. Dinner is not as fast because in Nicaragua, like most of the world, we linger over food. We don't race through it like Americans. They don't turn over table like Americans. So it's a completely different dining experience. We're likely to go out to bars and, and listen to live music. We're likely to go to, you know, uh, campestres and just sit around outside and relax on a Saturday afternoon. There's all kinds of things that change. Or maybe we're just going to go sit in the public park and enjoy being outside. Well, 
video games could be coming with you living in Nicaragua because you go places so much more often, the idea of taking your games with you might be way more important. Maybe not, maybe it doesn't affect you at all. But if that's something you wanna do and you're gonna be out, it's a lot more flexible. Whereas in the United States, you can, for us, we confidently knew we weren't gonna go out, so it didn't matter. Anyway, I want you to take an opportunity to intentionally rethink your life decisions and maybe you come to the same answers as before, not a problem. But give yourself the opportunity to evaluate intentionally the things that you're doing with your life and you'll generally find that there are places you can improve your life dramatically. For us, we're looking at buying a new car and of course we've always defaulted to Toyota and Nissan and gas-driven cars, it just made sense. But now that we're in Nicaragua, we have different driving needs and suddenly we're looking at a Chinese-made hybrid that is a completely different animal than we would ever have considered buying in the US and it looks like it's gonna cut our cost of car ownership by more than 50% and probably give us a much better driving experience and give us way better gas mileage, so cost savings into the future, as well as a lot of things just by reevaluating decisions we would never have thought about had we stayed in the United States. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and the work that we do here, you can sponsor the show and me personally by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It'll be up here on the screen. That comes directly to me, it's like Patreon, and it makes such a difference in helping me be able to do all the things we do here. I have to buy the cameras and microphones and all this stuff. If we just did a new show, we finally have the new microphones from Zoom and are doing shows on Nika Roomba with that. We have the first one out, it's Larry Emerson playing at the Simple Beach Lodge. It's about two hours long, not quite a concert. Just go check that out, that would be fantastic. Subscribe to that channel, show some love. It's a Spanish language channel, but it's just live music, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to, to see what shows are like here. We're starting to do more interviews there. We're gonna do more concerts now that we have the new microphones that's what we've been waiting for and suddenly we're able to do good like the older videos on there and eh, they're okay like but the, you can tell they're blowing out the microphones the new stuff is really good go check that out and uh boy thanks for joining me i'll see all of you tomorrow <laughs>